Welcome to Life-Giving Water Messages, where I expound upon the Word of God and, through the internet, deliver it to you. Today's message is part five in a five-part series entitled Joyride, and today's message is specifically entitled, Who Says You Can't Go Home? Based off of Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 24. So, let us dive into the Word today. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home even the hired servants have food enough to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet, and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead, but has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Amen. Sometimes we leave home with great expectations and hopes, but somewhere along the road we get off track and the the best decision is to head home. Many important lessons of life can be found on the road home. When I was a teenager, I went with my best friend, my best friend to his uh, grandparents' house for a, a picnic, and I uh, drove. I drove him and brought some other friends as well, uh, and we had a great time. It was it was a fun time. Uh, they lived in West Caldwell, West Caldwell, New Jersey, uh, which I had never been to before at that point. Um, and on the way home, I was confident I could make it just fine being that I, I drove there without getting lost. So going home should be a breeze, right? Now, keep in mind that this was before the days of GPS. Well, as it turned out, I got severely lost. I took a wrong turn that led to more wrong turns, and somehow I ended up in a part of Patterson that I hope to never see again. I mean, have you ever been there? Have you ever, not Patterson per se, but have you ever been in a place where you instantly know you stick out like a sore thumb, and you just wished you didn't make that wrong turn? So we ended up having to stop and ask someone for directions back to Route 80, and once, on, uh, once back on Route 80 West, uh, we started to head back home. By the time I had reached Route 15, which is the road I needed to connect to from Route 80, I really had to pee. I know, TMI, too much information, but I really, really, really had to go. And I'm not the kind of person to that likes to pull to the side of the road, if you know what I mean. But I really had to go. So I was speeding down Route 15 to get home as soon as possible. And that's when I saw the police lights behind me. Now, as it turns out, the police officer comes, asks for you know license 
license, uh, insurance, and registration, asks where I'm coming from, and me in my me being the not you know naive teenager, um, I'm I told him the truth. Well, I got lost in Patterson, and I'm on my way home. I really have to pee, <laughs> and and um, so the the officer hearing that I had been coming from Patterson and and. Uh, you know, a lot of drugs, I guess, come come from Patterson into the the rural areas. Uh, so, so when he heard that, he pulled me out of the car and my friends out of the car had us like, you know, uh, hands on the car, sp- spread your legs. You know, he's patting us down. They searched the car, and then uh, as as we were waiting for the the officer went back to the. Um, he said, you know, he's like, I I I have my uh, detective here, and he went back to the car and he got the detective and the detective comes out and I look at him, and I. I instantly recognize him. This is a guy who had graduated maybe three years, uh, three years before me. I think I was a freshman when he was a senior, so I knew him like personally. And he looked at me and he's like, "Todd, what are you doing here?" And I said, "I really have to pee." <laughs> he just looked at me and he shook his head and went back to the car. And um, we ended up uh, getting a. Uh, getting a ticket uh not for speeding but for uh, not having a seatbelt on uh uh and so uh that's that story but we've all had this experience of getting lost in a in a journey in the car or in a journey of the heart every journey begins with a first step right every journey begins with a first step and the first step is often the hardest so when we are lost, turning around is the hardest part because that become that becomes the first step in the journey home. And we're not really, I mean, we spent all this time going in this direction and now we're going to turn around and go back to where we came from. And we, we often resist doing this. So today's scripture passage is a passage that is beloved and gives us multiple messages from God. Sometimes we are easily lost. I certainly have experienced this. Sometimes we are easily lost. You have all heard um, my faith journey, or at least most of you listening probably have heard my faith journey, and how it was this passage, this passage of the prodigal son that spoke directly to me back in 2004, and it led me back into the church. For the prodigal It was easy to get lost due to money and popularity. And to put it into perspective, and we only read part of the story. There's another part of the story which we're not focusing on today. But to put it into perspective, this this young man asked his father for his inheritance ahead of time. In essence, he was telling his father, you're dead to me. Because that's when we get inheritance, right? We get it when someone dies. So in essence, he's, he's talking to his father and he's saying, I, you're dead to me. I want my inheritance now. And then he packs up and he leaves and he goes and spends it on riotous living and squanders all of his money away. For the prodigal, it was easy to get lost due to money and popularity. Good turned to bad and he ended up off course. Time passed, and he realized his state of being lost when he reached his most dark and vulnerable state, which is often the case, my friends. We don't know things are bad until they're so bad we can't ignore them anymore. And I guess when you're eating pods out of the troughs uh, with pigs, uh, you, you get to this place where you realize, you know, you've, you've really kind of messed things up pretty badly. Dire circumstance brought him back to his senses. And he determined that being a hired servant was better than his current condition. And so he headed home for a life no longer as a son, but as a servant. Why was this so hard? Why did it take him to be homeless and eating with the pigs to realize how far off course he had gotten? Fear? Ego? pride? I mean, despite the difficulties, he realized he could no longer live being lost. Friends, there are many ways in which this scripture can apply to our lives. 
but today we're going to focus on just a couple ways. And some of you may feel lost as you're listening to this. Some of you may feel lost in your lives. Some of you may actually be lost and not even realize it. That was the case for me when I left the church. I thought I was heading the right way, but I was actually lost and needed to make a U-turn. Have you allowed your pride or fear to keep you from going home? Or some of you may be longing for someone you love who is lost to return home. Some of you may be the father instead of the prodigal son. We must understand how hard it is for the prodigal son to make the first step. We have to understand that, especially if we're longing for them to come back home. We have to understand how hard it is for the prodigal child to make that first step. How do we respond to prodigals in our lives? How do we respond to the prodigals in our lives? In Return of the Prodigal Son, Henry Nouwen writes, To become like the father whose only authority is compassion, I have to shed countless tears, prepare my heart to receive anyone, whatever their journey has been, and forgive them from that heart. How? Sisters and brothers, how are we preparing our hearts? For those of us who are waiting for our prodigals to return home, are you patiently waiting, praying, leaning on the Lord for their return? Are you forgiving them even as their absence is causing you great pain? Or are you bitter and angry toward them? For those of you who are currently lost, I, I think of the Bon Jovi song, Who Says You Can't Go Home? John Bon Jovi had stated in an interview that he spent half of his life trying to escape New Jersey, which was his home, and the other half of his life making a concerted, concerted effort to stay in it. He, in some ways, was a prodigal son who eventually appreciated his roots and found his way home. And that's what led him to write that song, Who Says You Can't Go Home, which is a, a, a huge hit that you almost have to live under a, a rock to have not heard it. Um, but that's what inspired him to write that song. And for those of you who are currently lost, who says you can't go home? Who says you can't go home? Friends, if you feel like this, reach out to your pastor, reach out to your friends, contact me on social media, whatever, whatever the case may be. If, if this is you, reach out to your pastor, reach out to your friends, contact me on social media, or if you, if you know me personally, contact me personally. Who says you can't go home? Because I, I promise you, if you do that, if you reach out to, to somebody who is a spiritual mentor in your life, whether it be your pastor, a friend, your parents, myself, whoever, we'll walk side by side with you on your joyride. Because God loves you, and so do I. And so do the people who are, are mentors in your life and the people who love you and care about you. Who says you can't go home? For the rest of us, are you willing to be a people with open arms to the lost among us? Are we going to be a people that looks down on them and judges them? Or are we going to be a people that embraces them, that waits lovingly with open arms and embraces them, embraces them when they finally come home? I challenge you. I challenge you to soften your hearts and to make room for the prodigals among us. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we just thank you and praise you for, for our own journey, as well as the journeys of those who are around us. Lord, each of us come to the Lord in different ways. We come to you in different ways. 
And some of us, Lord, uh, have remained faithful to you our whole lives and have remained in the faith our whole lives, and others of us uh, have, have gone our own way, have separated from you, have asked for our inheritance early and left the, the family in order to squander it on things that are ultimately meaningless. And Lord, when we finally do realize that, we, when we finally realize that we've gone too far and we need to turn around and go home, we find that you are waiting for us with open arms. And so, Lord, let us be a people, whether we're prodigal sons and daughters or whether we are the parent waiting for them to come home, let us be a people who, who give, bring glory to you in all that we do. If we are lost, Lord, give us the strength to turn around and come home. If we are with you, Lord, and waiting for those who are lost to come back, let us be a people of compassion and patience so that all people may know that they are loved and that they may find their home in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so I'd like to thank you for tuning in today and listening to this message. Again, it was part five of a five-part series entitled Joyride, and today's specific message was entitled, Who Says You Can't Go Home? Uh, so I'd like to invite you to join us next week. Um, and, uh, and you know, I would like to invite you to also check out our episode notes, which uh, in, in which you can find the link to support us on our Life-Giving Water swag store. You can... Um, you can uh, also click on the link to check out the Party on John cast. Our Halloween episode is out and rockin', so go check that out. Um, we always have, uh, Sal and I always have uh, stuff up our sleeves for these episodes, and I think you're going to find the Halloween uh, one to be awesome. Also, my friends, I would like to invite you to rate us and review us uh, on on whatever platform you listen to. Uh, the more we're rated and the more we're reviewed, uh, the better we we have in being bumped up in the listing so that people can find us and listen to us. And surely if you listen to us, you want to spread the good the good news and the, the good word. So uh, support us that way. It's an easy way to do it. It takes three seconds, and uh, we, appreci- we appreciate it, of course. Uh, with that said, friends, I want to remind you that you are richly blessed so that you may be a blessing to others. So be that blessing. Go in peace. Thank you.